Praise God. I want you to, this morning I want to, to receive, you know what, next month, I just want to just plug this in because I think it's so important. Because I'm, I'm being so pushed to go this way, but I'm, I'm, I'm fighting not to do it. We're going to start spending some time where... Uh, understanding how to get your needs met. So we're going to talk about areas where resources and finances are concerned. That there's so much misinformation out there. And all the misinformation has people, when they hear uh, messages about generosity and love and giving, um, they, we tend to run away from that, not understanding God's intent. And the enemy is able to rob you of God's intent when we don't have clarity. So what we want to do in the upcoming month is to sharpen your pencil where that is concerned. I'll throw this out here because I need you to understand. See, you have to know what you need so that God can fulfill it because a lot of times we think what we need is not what we really need. And one of the things that God teaches us is to learn how to be specific. And the reason our needs are not being met sometimes because we're not specific. We're asking for things to get a need met, but we don't know what our real need is. Like you may need, you may need a car but you're asking for money. You may need food, but you're asking for money. And so you don't ever get the money because money is not what you need. You need transportation. And so you ask and you ask amiss and you do not receive it because you are not specific about what you need. And so we just got to go back and sharpen a pencil and come to realize that this God that we serve in is not holding anything from you. He's doing everything to get you something. But where we're missing it is we're asking for stuff we don't need. So we're going to spend some time where the word is concerned, shopping your skills so that now you, you're not going to have any problem walking in and receiving everything you need. But to do that, I'm going to have to clear up some, some bad teaching, some misunderstanding, which has called us to not receive and be apprehensive about doing what God is telling you to do. So we just need to bring understanding, bring clarity. I said this before, one of the greatest gifts that God has ever given to man is the gift of clarity. Because if you were clear about some things that you are now clear about, you would have made different decisions. We all say that if I knew what I knew today, I knew that yesterday I would have made another decision. How many would say that? Well, let's just get clear on this subject so that we can start walking in and what God has. And here's why that's too important. There are things coming on the earth. If we're not rooted and grounded in this, when the money fails, when the economy fails, you that is, that's put your whole life into that, it's going to be difficult in that minute to try to shift over. Okay, now, Lord, help. And, and, and it's not that God won't help you. It's just that you don't have enough clarity to walk it out even though you have it. So you got to get clear before you get there. So we're going to spend some time to position you so when these things happen, you're not someone that when it fails, you fail with it. And so I'm just giving you heads up. This will be the most important thing I've ever taught. 
you position yourself for success no matter what happens in the world. That's where we're going. I'm, I've been resisting Tom on it for a while, now, but, but I need to finish what I'm doing. So listen, stand on your feet. Uh, today I want to receive today's tithe and offering. Now, just, just hear this with me. I'm going to give you a scripture you've heard over and over again, but hear it afresh. Give and it shall be given. Now, why does that work? Does it work just because you gave? No. It works because you believe it. Faith is the vehicle that takes possession of every promise of God. See, God makes you the promise. He doesn't make the promise to a thing. He makes you the promise. Here's God's promise to you. And this is relational. This is how God wants to be to you. Give and it shall be given to you. Now, he's not, it's, it's more than you, you, you just giving something to God. He's trying to relate to you in a way that he relates. I need you to know me in this way. The reason I'm making this promise to you is because I want you to know me like this. I want you to know me as a person, as a being that gives and keeps on giving. And I want you now to become a reflection of that. Wow, that's who he is. And now I become that and now I'm living in that. But it doesn't happen because you heard it or it doesn't happen because you just do it. It happens when you take that as a truth and execute that. You understand? It doesn't work until you believe it. And just because you do it doesn't mean you believe it. That's why for some of you all, you have to give till you become what you're doing. Here's what the become what you believe. When you become what you believe, you, you, you live that promise. So I'm not just doing it, I'm becoming it. Give and it shall be given. Give and it shall be given. Give and it shall be given. I become that. And the last thing that has to be that we totally give God lordship over is this area. It's the last area he becomes lord over. And you say, well, you know, I wish we could just do church and skip it. No, you can't ever skip it because you, you, you write him out of the equation. And if you take Jesus out of the equation, all you have is the limitations that come along with what your paycheck your earnings can give you but if you include God in this thing he takes the roof off the mother <laughs> come on Bootsy everybody like who is that I'm sorry I'm sorry there's a group of people like who is that I know y'all don't know who he is <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry let me bring it around with y'all on this thing that's my, my, my 30 and none are like, what is that? <laughs> uh, put it this way. He takes every limit off of your life, all right? God is not trying to take something from you. He's trying to reveal himself to you. Giving is God revealing himself to you. Not trying to take money for it. And so if you see giving as leaving you and not getting to know God, you miss the meaning for it. Because God doesn't need anything from you. And so until that, it becomes a relationship. You haven't even understood the, the meaning of generosity. That's who he is. And that's who he is to you. And the only way that you would know him in that is you have to participate. So this morning, I, I want you to don't be selfish in yourself. What I mean by that, don't just think about you. Well, you know, you know, you know. 
The selfish mentality is the reason that we don't. We don't. We're not a generous person. It's because we're selfish. Think about it. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter how much you give. You can be generous with having a little. Generosity has nothing to do with how much you have. It's just who you are as a person. If you're a generous person, you may not have money to give, but you, how many people you meet people, they're always giving you something. Ain't necessarily money. They come by, huh, here's a cupcake. I went by the store, you want some bananas, Pastor? Like, what is that? That's, that's who they are. We're being converted. We're being transformed to be like him. And that's what that's all about. He's your daddy, and he's generous. And all children want to be like their father. The economy makes us stingy and tight and fearful and worried. In other words, it makes us to be less like him. And God wants you to be more like him in a world that needs him. Well, how will they know him if they don't see him in us? Your generosity is a revelation of who he is. And it says to a world, my daddy takes care of me. Wouldn't it be nice for you to find out, will he really take care of me? Let me tell you, find that out before you get in a place where you need for him to take care of you. <laughs> Don't wait till you need it to figure that out. Figure that out before you need it. So, so you, when you get there, you'll be the same person you was when you had no needs. And then when I have a need, I'm still the same person. Are you hearing me? We've got to walk this out. And I've got to challenge you because I got to get you from being comfortable. The world wants you to be comfortable. Comfortably limited. <laughs> comfortable without all the things that God wants you to have. Well, you know, Lord, if I could just get, you, see, you, that's not God. So, are, are you with me? This is why your giving, it stretches you to come out of your comfort zone. It stretches you to stop being selfish, just looking at you, because if you look at you and not include God, you're going to limit you. Think about everything that you do that God speaks to you and you look at yourself to do it, you don't do it. If God says, I want to give you a house debt free, you look at you, you just limited you. He's trying to get you to look away from you and look to your father. Every time you give, and you do it that way, you position yourself to come in line with what he's already provided. God has already provided for you. You just have to get in line with it. Just like salvation was provided, what did you, when you got in line with that, salvation took place in your life. Same with everything. It's more difficult when it comes to your resources because the world has taught you to depend on your money. So you have a dependency on your money more than you depend on God. And if anybody asks you for your money, that church just wants your money. But it's all right if Walmart wants your money. God don't want your money because he's broke. Because he knows money isn't the everything you need. He will give you money. So this morning, I want you to take your phones out. 
And I need you, I want you to worship God with your giving. I want you to participate. I want heaven to see you as being partaker of this. I want heaven to see your part in it. I don't, I don't see your part. Only if you phone up and be lying, you know, I pretend. Like, what if something's wrong with that? You know, in the Bible, they brought an offering to, to God at one time as a lie. And I don't believe this is going to happen to anybody, but they brought an offering and lied. And they all end up dead. I'm like, oh, Jesus, I wonder what that happened. Would it be three of us still in here? I bet when it was offering time doing no services, it was serious. I ain't giving the day, Lord. Okay, I got, I'm all right with that. In other words, we just need to be genuine and have some level of integrity. Whether it's, it's 50 cent or 50 million, be people of integrity because this is between you and God. You ain't, you ain't messing nothing up but yourself. Why? Because God's trying to do something for you and you're not honest. And you think it's cool because you're just concerned about people here thinking you're doing something. If that's what we're doing, man, we're missing a God who loves us. Now, I need you. So your giving needs to come from a place of love. Don't give out of compulsory of because people are quiet of you. No. I do it out of my love. Have you ever given anybody, somebody, something you love? Have you ever received something from somebody who loves you? Wave your hand if you have. I just want to make sure I'm talking to the right group. Because y'all said they're like, really kind of like I'm concerned. Do you know, you remember what that's like? Getting something from somebody who loves you. Every time you give like that, you're really giving it to him. We just happen to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. You cannot do nothing for Jesus without doing it for you. That's why he says, whatever you do to the least of them, you have done it unto me. How do I know that I love God? Because I love you. You can't do something for somebody that he isn't honored. So let's be, let's be honorable people. Let's don't be, because the fake stuff hurts us. So now if you're ready to give, then lift your phone up if you use a phone. You can go to the QR code here. You can see, you can text 22300 to hashtag VCMI. You can even mail it in if you need to mail. And I'm not mad at anyone who struggles with giving. Trust me, I'm not. I don't want you to feel bad about it. Were you a little apprehensive over it? I, listen, let us help with that. Over the next month or so, we're going to fill you up with so much love and confidence of your father that you won't struggle with that. Because here's the real struggle. You just don't know whether he'll take care of you. That's the real problem. And it's our job, along with your job, is to come to know that. Father, we lift up what you're giving us. And Father, we thank you so, so much for the opportunity to be changed. Really, the opportunity to be free from worrying about how we're going to be able to make it, we're going to be able to eat, live, survive. I just want to be free of that, Lord. Totally just depending on you. God, I want you to receive our seeds sown to better our future. God, we give you the praise and the honor for everyone who is giving. And those who are giving and still fearful in their giving, God, I'm asking you to bless them as well. Cause them to come to know you. 
not just reading scriptures, come to know you as the one that give and it shall be given. And Father, we will tell everybody the stories. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody in agreement says amen. amen. All right. All right. Do we do the ushers? What do we do now? I don't even know what we do anymore. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, tell your neighbor, I love you. And tell them Jesus loves them too.
I got three messages. And they're all different topics. <laughs> and, but I, I know where I'm going to emphasize. Father, once again, we come before you. We approach your presence. God, with such reverence. God, we're asking that you would speak to us. Speak more than what I am able to articulate. Cause the eyes of our understanding to be enlightened, that we may know what is your hope. God, so that we can walk in the hope of your calling for our lives. Father, we believe that we're living under open heaven how you've already provided for us. So we just thank you, Father, for strong wisdom of what to do and how to do it in these days. And we will not fail to honor your name and give you glory for it. And everybody that's in agreement, shout amen. You may be seated. This morning, I, I want to talk to you about building strong family ties. I have and I want to give you some key areas that I honestly believe that you and I need to be skilled in if we're going to build strong families that can last. Some of the things that we, we need to be skilled at is the Word. The Word helps us to build a, a, a strong family ties that will last. Another thing is love. Another thing is, is prayer. Another thing is faith, forgiveness, vision, communication, legacy. Another thing is keeping your family in committed fellowship in the church where they can be rooted and grounded spiritually and be held accountable and to build relationships that would help propel them uh, to build strong families. So these are areas that I believe that we, we, we have to become skilled at the word of righteousness. You know, when I think about, you know, the word, I think about the scripture is in um, Matthew chapter 7. Because Jesus is teaching if we want homes that will last, if we want to build relationships that will last, then one of the starting places for that is the Word of God. And he says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, in the easy reading version, it says, whoever hears these sayings of mine and obeys them. He says, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on a rock. He says, it rained hard, the flood came, the winds blew and beat against that house, but it did not fall because it was built on a rock. I love that. <clears throat> he said, and whoever hears these teachings of mine and does them not is like a foolish man who builds his house on sand. He says, it rained hard, the floods came, the winds blew, beat against that house, and it fell with a loud crush. Jesus makes three promises in this text. Jesus promised us, number one, problems. Rain, flood, and winds comes to everyone's life. Jesus promises success to those who hear and obey the word. And then Jesus promises failure to those who hear and disobey the word. And it's not that God is causing your failure, but the word is here to give you success. But if we just be hearers only of the word and not a doer of the word, he said, well, Problems are coming. But those that will be successful in times of problem are those that hear the word and become radically obedient to the word. 
the word becomes your source for success. Especially if you want to build a strong family. You, you want to build a family that will last. Then we've got to use the word to do so. The second trait that I believe that helps us to build strong families is this thing called love. Somebody say love. love. We talk a lot about love and we, we've heard a lot of messages about love. But... Uh, I think it's important for you and I to really take a look at this area called love. Um, because love has to be the foundation for building a family that will last. And the love that we're, we're talking about is not a love that, a feeling type of love, but it's the love of God. I love when Galatians 5 verses 13 through 15 in the Message Bible says this. He said, it is absolutely clear that God has called us to a free life. God wants you and I to be free. He wants your families to be free. He says, just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. Oh, God. That is so good that you need to understand. God has called you and I to a life of freedom. But we do not want to use our freedom to bring destruction. You know, you, you, can, you can bring hurt and destruction in your family because of the things you say and the things you don't do, things that you should do. We, we can't use our freedom to put our families in bondage. Um, he says, rather use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. Freedom grows within your family when there is love in the house. Our children should not be walking on eggshells in the house. They shouldn't be afraid if something breaks in the house that all hell's going to break out because you broke a glass in the house. You always tan stuff up in there, boy, you got a problem. No, no, see, what are you doing? Because they make a mistake, then you pounce on them. No, freedom grows when there is love within the family. We want our children to grow up in homes that are, they feel free. And that only takes place when they're loved in a home. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. Just want to make it so simple so that we know how to, to create family, create a culture where that, that is family, it, it's that that people want to be together. And the reason for that is because of this thing called love. And sometimes it takes everybody in the household to help this to come. Doesn't necessarily have to come from the parent. And sometimes the love will come from our children. Our children will teach us how to love. They remind us how important love is within the family. Sometimes I step out and put my foot in my mouth and then only to realize that, Tony, that wasn't love. I realize the things that my daughter is doing, the, the, the passion that she has for people is because she has a great love for people. And it's always reminding me that this is what God wants in our family. This is what God wants. This is the building block. Whoa, glory. This is a tremendous building block. And sometimes we are reminded of, of its value when we look at our children. The need for love. In the Passion Translation, it says, Beloved ones, God has called us to live a life of freedom. Man, if you can't be free in your home, where can you be free at? Do you have so many rules and regulations that no one is free in your house? Don't touch this. Don't sit there. Don't drink. Don't drink this. Don't eat this. This is mine. Don't do this. My God, we come in your house. We like a prison. God has called us to live a life of freedom. 
But don't view this wonderful freedom as an excuse to set up a basis of operation in the natural realm. Constantly love each other and be committed to serve one another. For all of the law can be summed up in one regard. One statement. Demonstrate love to your neighbor even as you care for and love yourself. All you got to do is look at how you take care of yourself. If this concept is so far-fetched, beyond your reach, here's God makes it simple for you. It says, measure how you take care of yourself. Then I need you to do that to your family. So easy to do that. We read in Deuteronomy, the greatest commandment ever given was love. He says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, he says, he says, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all of your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be in your heart. Where is it supposed to be at? In our hearts. Impress them on your children. What are we impressing our children? We're teaching our children to love. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when they sit at home and when they walk along the road and when they lie down and when they get up. What are we talking about? Love. Tie them as a symbol on their hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. Seems to me that God says, do whatever you need to do. Make this a priority that you begin to walk in the love of God and you be a people that will impart that same love to your family. When they're sitting down, when they're walking, when they're talking, put it before their eyes, put it before their ears. Make sure that it gets in their heart. But I do realize when we talk about the love of God that it's important to really love the way that we should love if we don't know that God loves us. Much of our dysfunction in the area of loving well or loving at all is because we don't really have a healthy revelation of what it means to be loved by God as our Father. And so to do that, we've got to start with understanding this truth that God loves you. Say, God loves me. I want you to open your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, we read what I believe is a very familiar verse of Scripture that probably everybody in the building and online can quote. Romans 8 Verse 28, he says, and we know that all things, somebody say all things, work together for our good. Now, listen, he says, we know that all things work together for our good. We know, we know, we know what? All things work together for our good to them that love God, to them that love God. To them that love God. Well, you can't love God without knowing that God loves you. So this person is obviously a person who've come to the place where they know that God loves them. And when you know that God loves you, you can walk in as all things work together for my good. See, when you know that God loves you, you know all things work together for your good. So it doesn't matter what you're coming up against, no matter what you're faced with, it will not bother you because I know something. And here's what I know. All things work together for my good. You may have got a medical report that is bad, but because I know that God loves me. Woo, they may say you got cancer, but because I know that God loves me. You better hear me. The thing that overcomes that is knowing that God loves you. Doesn't matter what bad report I get about my children. Here's what I know. God loves my kids. 
My kids can be smoking weed and they can be doing some crazy things. But here's what I still know. God loves me and my children. And because I know that God loves them, here's what I'm saying. All things are working. Woo, glory for their good. They're going to be all right. I don't have to wait to see it because I know something. And what I know is born out of the fact that I know that God loves Tony. Woo, glory. You got to know that God loves you. This cannot be a concept in your head. It's got to be a, a working reality that I know that I know that I know that I know. Let me tell you what I know that I know. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. I know what I know. Whether nobody else know it, I know it. Well, you know, a preacher, God loves me. And so he said, all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Well, you all qualified for that. You wouldn't be on the planet had not God called you. You're here because you are the called according to his purpose. So we already got that, whether we realize it or not. The thing that we've got to work on is this pursuit of knowing that God loves you. Now, how do I know that these things will work for me? Where do I get my confidence from? Look at verse 26 of Romans 8, 26. He says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. He helps our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh what? Intercession. What does the Holy Ghost do? He makes intercession for us. Woo, glory! With groanings which cannot be uttered. That's why I know that all things work together for my good. The Holy Ghost is praying for me. I said the Holy Ghost is praying for you. If, if he can, I know he get a prayer that work. I know that when he pray it works. Now, that's before the statement, all things working together for your good. I'm, why is it working? The Holy Ghost praying for me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Holy Ghost praying for me. Now let's look at 2034. Because see what God, now you're going to understand why God makes statements that's going to change them. Oh, let me read, let me read. It says, verse 34, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again. Woo! Who is even at the right hand of God, who also... Jesus, who also makes intercession for us. Shut up! Not only do I got the Holy Ghost praying for me, I got Jesus praying for me. Woo, glory! Devil, you can't touch this. You can't stop me. God loves me so much. He got the Holy Ghost praying for me, and he got Jesus praying for me. And we know now. That's why we know all things will work together for your good. Jesus is praying and the Holy Ghost is praying. And how many people know when they pray, they get their answers prayer? So I know all things are working for my good. You may not like me, but I already know the outcome. Do, do you, you don't even get it. God is saying, I've already assigned an outcome. What's the outcome? All things work together for my good. See, we, we almost, we lost this through the pandemic. You, 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 no, no, no. The reason you will make it through it is not because you had a mask on. You're not going to make it because you're staying in the house. You're going to make it 
because all things work together for our good. Why? He praying. <laughs> you hiding in a house. <laughs> Get out of that house. Jesus is interceding. The Holy Spirit is interceding. All things are working together for our good. Verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us. I said if God be for us. Who could be against us? He's not saying something won't come against us. He's saying anyone who is against you doesn't have a say in your outcome. You better hear me. Why? I'm interceding for you. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your children. I'm praying for your marriage. I'm praying for your families. I am interceding for you. So whoever is against you, I'm saying they don't have a say in your outcome. Somebody say, I'm blessed like that. I'm blessed like that. Say, I'm loved like that. Anyone who sees you the way the Father sees you would never be against you. Anyone who sees you the way he sees you would never be against you. And the only reason they're against you because they don't see you the way he sees you. Are you hearing me? Do you want if? <laughs> Nobody could be against you if they see you the way that God sees you. Anyone who sees you through the eyes of a father is for you. Anyone that sees you through his eyes is for you. I need you to get a hold of it. When you're walking in love, we're talking about a God that's so devoted to you, so in love with you, that he has the Holy Spirit praying for you and Jesus interceding for you. God doesn't see you in your flesh and all of your weaknesses and all your failures. He doesn't see you in light of that. And so when you're building family, you've got to see your family through the lens of heaven. When you see your family through the lens of heaven, you're not moved by what you see going on in their flesh because you know that if God be for them, whoo, glory, that God has an outcome for our children. He has an outcome for our family. He's already labeled an outcome for everything you're dealing with. You just need to see through heaven's lenses. You're overwhelmed through human lenses. You will never be overwhelmed by the sin that takes place in your children. You'll never be overwhelmed by anybody's sin. God is not overwhelmed by sin. He overwhelms sin. He says you overcome evil with what? Good. If you see people from heaven's lens, you'll see how devoted and how in love he is toward you. That even your sin doesn't change his mind. He goes on in verse 32. He that spared not his own son. He that spared not his own son. He that spared not his own son. Look at the love. Look at it. He that spared not his own son. Listen to the love. But delivered him up for us all. As you and I. How shall he not with him? You are with him. Freely give you all things. 
Did you hear that? You worried about your finances. You just, the problem what's missing is you don't know that God loves you. God made this, uh, the, the extreme sacrifice. What was the extreme? By giving Jesus. How can he make the extreme sacrifice and give Jesus and not give you all things? Woo! Do you understand? If that's the extreme, everything is under that. All of that is included. How shall he not freely give you all things? How can he not? How? He gave you the extreme sacrifice, his son. How can he not provide a house? How can he not provide a car? How can he not provide healing? How can he not provide deliverance? How can he not freely, in other words, cost you nothing? It cost him everything, but it cost you nothing. How shall he not freely give you all things? Nothing's left out. Nothing left out personally. Nothing left out relationally. Nothing left out financially. Nothing left out emotionally. Nothing's left out. How shall he not? How can he love you like that and leave something out? There's nothing left out. It's only left out in your mind. And it's left out because you don't know how much he loves you. Until we settle the love issue, we can't settle the provision issue. You're going to keep working to try to achieve what his love sacrificed for to give you. You're going to keep self-effort trying to achieve things that God, through his love and grace, has provided for you. How can he not? Do you understand? He can't help himself. I don't need you to love me. I love you anyway. While you were yet a sinner, I died for you. Verse 33, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who going to bring a charge against you saying you're not worthy for any of those things? You're not worthy to be a child of God. You're not worthy to be his daughter. You're not worthy to be his son. I know you screwed up, but nothing can separate you from the love of God. We're not talking about something we earn or deserve. We're talking about something that God had in store for us all. He's a father and he's madly devoted to you. He's so in love with you. Who shall lay a charge against you? There's no one who has the authority to stand before the father and to accuse you. We know that the devil is the accuser of the saints but he doesn't have the authority to accuse you. Why? Because Jesus dealt with all of your sin, past, present, and in the future. <laughs> Satan, sure, he don't even have to take him to court. He said, look at where the nails were at. I nailed that to a cross. Woo, glory! He who the Son sets free, watch this, he is what? free indeed. You're not trying to get free. You're not working to be free. You're not checking your lifestyle out to determine whether you're free. Let me tell you, you are free because the Son set you free. And whether you realize it and whether you walk in it or not, you're still free. I could put $15 million in your bank account. Whether you withdraw it or not, it's in your account. You can walk around like a beggar. You can walk around on drugs. You can walk around still drinking and smoking. You're free, but you're not walking in your freedom. Why? He who the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. You're free. 
I said, you're free. You're not free when you stop smoking, when you stop drinking, when you stop cussing. You are free when you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Somebody shout, I'm free. God's forgiveness is so complete that it even changes how God sees you. He went to a cross and forgave all of us. And that God doesn't see you like you see yourself. It's so transformed God that he don't even see your sin. He says, I blotted out all your transgressions and they're never to be remembered. I, I love that. Because your past no longer belongs to you. You didn't hear me. I got, I've dealt with your past. So you don't have, your past has nothing to do with you. Two minutes ago has nothing to do with you. 30 seconds ago has nothing to do with you. That's the love of God. I have dealt with your past. Woo, glory. So let it go. Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for you? Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress, a pandemic, a disease that come on the earth, because that's what it did. It tried to separate us. I understand how I can't come back out. It was the design was to separate us. And we didn't realize what the enemy was doing behind it because he was coming up behind that and he had a motive to separate the church. But my writing says, who shall separate us from what? The love of Christ. Shall tribulations, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, perils, or a sword? Woo! As it is written, for thy sakes we are killed all the days long, and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, nay, in all these things we are what? More than conquerors through him that love you. Now why are you more than a conqueror? Now listen, you're not just a conqueror, you're more than. How is it that we're more? You got the Holy Ghost praying for you, and you got Jesus praying. That is way more than you ever going to need. The Holy Ghost prayers would have been enough by itself, because that's God. But Jesus joined it, and that's God. So now I am more than a conqueror. My life, I get to live beyond what it means to conquer. I get to live beyond what it means to live as a conqueror. God wants you to live as a more than. Touch your neighbor and say, hello, more than. Tell them on us, hello, more than. I love the word more, more, more. More than. How do you, see, that's, that's what love does. Because this love that God has for us is inexhaustible. It'll never come to an end. God will love you here when you get to heaven. He'll keep on loving you. We'll never see the end of it. That's what makes us more. God loves you. He loves you more. Yeah, hallelujah. He says in verse 37, they and all these things, we are more than conquerors. You know, we have to talk like that. Joel chapter 3 says, let the weak say he's strong. You got to start talking. Like, I'm more than a conqueror. I'm more. Stand up straight and talk like that. Walk like that. I'm more, I'm more. Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, 
so you don't have to stay home because of pandemic. I am persuaded that neither death. See, when you are fully persuaded by the love of God, death doesn't persuade you. The fear of dying doesn't grip you. See, we were gripped by the fear of dying. They went on the TV, you're going to be dead. You need to stay in the house. You need to put a mask on. Listen, you could catch COVID 30 times and still live. Why? I ain't going nowhere. I got something I'm here to do. And here's why. God loves me. Remember, the storms come to house, but your house just don't crumble. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, what, delivers us out of them all. Well, I'm going to stay in the house because I'm worried I'm about to catch that. Please, you can catch it in the house. Why? Because you're afraid. But I like what he writes here. I am persuaded. Is anybody persuaded this morning? That neither death nor life Oh, Lord. No angels, no principalities, no power. Watch this. No things present, no things to come. Present or things to come. So it doesn't matter what's going to come. No matter what Here's another variance coming. There's one greater. I don't get no things to come. Now, I know I'm messing with some of y'all. Like, <laughs> Because if you knew the love of God, you wouldn't struggle with things coming. See, when you don't know the love of God, you struggle when things come. That may scare other people, don't scare you. Because I am persuaded. What is he persuaded about? God loves me. Now listen to me. You as an earthly parent, you would do this to, for your children if you could. You would protect your child from any kind of sickness, any kind of disease, any kind of harm, hurt, or danger. That's what you would do. If you had the power to do it on his level. Well, this is what, this is what his love looks like. And this is his response to God's love. I am persuaded. That has to be your, your response to the love of God, him loving you, that I am persuaded that neither death nor life, no angels, whoo, no principalities, no powers, no things present or things to come, no height, no depth, no any other creature shall separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Did, did you hear that? I am persuaded, in other words, that God loves me. And no matter what comes up on this earth, it's not going to separate me from this truth that God loves me. Because that's what these things are coming to do, separate you from the truth that God loves you. Because what happens? You start protecting yourself. You start making sure you're all right. You start to being your own savior. And you forget that you have a father who has Jesus praying for you, the Holy Ghost praying for you, and he's so devoted for you and already says all things work together for your good. But you're not responding that way because you're responding by news. And that news has an ending too. There are people that caught COVID and didn't even know they had it. What was that, a cough? <laughs> okay. Because you know, some people just say, I ain't got time for that. I, I, I got stuff I got to do, man. I, 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 I. You know that there were times when you went to work and everybody was sick and you said, I can't afford to be sick. I got something I got to do. And you didn't get sick. Why? Because you already determined, I ain't got time for that. 
And if it show up, it's going to get up off me. <laughs> it ain't going to last. Why? Because my daddy loves me. Oh, oh let, me, um, let me hurry up. I didn't realize it took up this much time. Uh, 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 uh. Thank you. That's what I needed. I needed some help. Now watch this anyway. Did you notice that? He says, I'm, I, am, I am persuaded that neither of these things will, will take place in my life. They, will, they won't rule my life. They won't be my conclusion. They won't be my outcome. Why? Because I know that God loves me. I know that the Holy Ghost is praying for me. I know that Jesus is praying for me. I know that my Father loves me. I know my outcome won't be that. I know that nothing will separate me from the love of Christ, which is in Christ Jesus. And he says, I know, I know that neither things present or things past will do it. Did you know he never, know, he never put in things in your past? Did you notice he never included your past? I'm persuaded that neither death, life, principalities, nor things present. So whatever happens, I'm not even worried about it. No things to come. Did you notice he never even put it in your past? He intentionally omitted your past. Why did he omit your past? Because the blood of Jesus took care of your past. You, you don't even have a right to talk about it. We all had an ugly past, but you can't soak in your past. Well, you know this and that. You can't soak in your past. Because he dealt with it for you, so you don't have a right to live in it. A past is 30 seconds from now. That's your past. You don't have a right to live in it. The only thing you have a right to is that you can rejoice what Jesus did for you in the past. Woo, glory. He healed my body. Woo, glory. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Mm. Come help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Woo, glory. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, we need to give God some praise. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He saved me just in time. I want to praise his name. Each day. This, come help me praise him. Look what the Lord has done. I can need me a musician now. I could have used a musician now. Woo! Glow! He healed my body. Just in time. Some of you all got saved. Just before crack cocaine came out. Snorting cocaine, but you 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 missed the crack part. He saved you just in time. Oh, look, look, look. Can somebody give God a praise up in here? That's, a, that's an old song. That song before me, but sometimes you just have to look at what he's done. 
All my millenniums like, what is that? I'm sorry. Forgive me today. I just. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm going to praise his name. Put your hands together. Be ever more the same. Shut up in my bones, just like fire. Shut up in my bones, Holy Ghost fire. Shut up in my bones. Ooh. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Woo. We we gotta we we. I, I'm losing the group. My millennium's like, where they at? Where they going? Don't worry, I feel I'm lost too now. The musicians are lost. They don't even know what to do with that. They up there like, cause they millennium. Yeah, what is this? So. We're going to bring it all the way around. I need you to know that God loves you. That whole Romans was trying to tell you one thing. God's got your back. You don't have to feel it. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get everything right. He loves you. He cares for you and he's devoted to you. And if you're going to pursue something, pursue discovering the truth of how much he loves you. It will radically change how you do everything with your life. And here's why. If you're not living from this place where the biggest thing in your life is that God loves you, you're living less than what God has for you. If there is something bigger to you than the fact that God loves you, you haven't walked through the doors of blessings, provision, care, protection, and love that he has for you because you're overwhelmed by some of the minor things. The pandemic was minor. And if you was more overwhelmed with that, you missed it. I missed it. And I could even give you a scripture to confirm that. And I chose to not do it, but I'm going to do it. Jude 1 verse 20 says, keep yourself in the love of God. Because the greatest reality in your life is the fact that God loves you. There's no reality bigger than that. God loves you. And if you're not aware of God's love for you, then you are living an inferior life. 
So he gives you the responsibility. This you keep yourself in the love of God. Do it where your marriages are concerned. Do it where your relationships are concerned. Do it where you are personally. Do it where your businesses are concerned. Do it where your mind is concerned. Your emotional life is concerned. Keep yourself in the love of God. Oh, Jesus. Keep it. That's, that's for me to do that, Tony. Keep it. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And then he goes into verse 24. He says, keep yourselves in the love of God. Verse 25. To the only wise. Let me back it up. Keep yourself to the love of God. Look into the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto the eternal life. Here it is. Now, this is what I was looking at. Now unto him that is able. <laughs> I said he's able to keep you from falling. No disease is going to kill you. I don't care whatever pandemic comes up on the scene again. Now under him that is able to keep you from falling. Whoa. Glow! Glow! He's able to keep Tony from falling and to present me faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and forevermore. Did you hear what he just said? He's able to keep you doesn't matter what's coming up on earth, whether it's a financial problem, he's able to keep you. Don't matter for another pandemic, he's able to keep you. I said he's able to keep you. So now he said, now keep yourselves in the love of God. Because he's able to keep you. <laughs> You keep yourself, he'll keep you. He'll keep you from falling. And he will present you faultless. Doesn't mean I won't mess up here and there. But he will present me faultless. Because it ain't based on my behavior. It's based on his presentation of who I am. Remember, you don't own your past. You only own your present and your future. And what's in my present? Keep myself in the love of God. Keep myself in the love of God. That's my future. I, I can own that. That's the only thing I can own. I can own keeping myself in the love of God. And he can present me faultless. He can keep me from falling. That's a father's love. He will not allow you to fall. You don't have to be afraid of what's coming. You got a father who loves you. And the day you figure that out, when you start to fall, he catch you. You tilt over, he picking you up. Every bad decision you've ever made, he can keep you from falling. One thing he's asking for, keep yourself in the love of God. That's what he's asking. Do that. That's the biggest revelation that you and I should live from. God loves me. Say it. God loves me. Say it again. God loves me. Say it louder. God loves me. One more time. God loves me. Come on, let's give God the praise.
And I'm closing today. I'm spending more time with you because I know things are coming up on the earth. And it's my job as your pastor to equip you for it. So I'm taking a little bit more time because I'm preparing you. I'm positioning you. So no matter what comes up, God keeps us from falling. If you're mad at me for that, I'm sorry. That's my assignment. It's to position you. I love you. But more than that, God loves you. And my greatest desire today was to get that over to you. He got you. He got you, CC. He got you. He got you, baby. He got you. He got us. He got us. Everything that comes is coming to separate you from that love. Don't be separated. Make up your mind now. No matter what comes, I'm going to keep myself in the love of God. Tell your neighbor, whatever comes, I'm going to keep myself in the love of God. All right. And that means I'm not going to stop coming to church because stuff for fear. Keep myself in the word keep myself with the reality he loves me here's what I need to do and we can go home if you're here and you've never given your life to God all of this starts with that please if that's you don't wait a long time secondly if you're here and you need to rededicate your life thank you God bless you baby you need to rededicate your life she's fine she's fine leave her alone leave her alone excuse me leave her alone she's all right Stand right here. Stand right. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Stand right. Hi. Hey, come on down. Anybody else? You ready to give your life to God? Thank you. You need to rededicate your life. Come on down. It's, it's, it's your time. I love you. I love you. I love you. If you need. The baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of praying in a language from another world. That's you. You're not doing that. Come on down. And last, very important. You're not a part of a family or community. God is a God of community. Four things. I need to give my life to God. Number two, I need to rededicate my life. Number three, I need the Holy Ghost and all he has. See, I, when, when I heard about that, I just asked my mother, is that something I ought to have? My mother said, yeah, you need to get that. So I went and got it. I didn't even know what I was going to get, but I went and got it. <laughs> and last, if this is not your family, let us be a part of your family. You need to be a part of a family. God doesn't have long range. You're not going to make it by yourself. The world wants you to be by yourself. Because the enemy attacks us when we're alone. But when we are family, the Bible says one can chase a thousand, two will chase ten thousand. Two of us can take him down. I want you to look around and ask those four questions. Number one, do you need to give your life? Come on, encourage them to come. Don't let them sit in that seat and miss heaven. Get up out of that seat. Is that, am I back on? Yes, come on, let's, let's praise God. Woo. Yes, Jesus. 
This is your greatest day. Praise the Lord. Ah, this is family. This is what this is about. I mean, who? You, when you go to heaven, you want to take your family, don't you? I love you. I love you. When you go to heaven, you want to take your family. I want my family to be with me. Yes. Listen, we all going to, we get to heaven, you, you want your family with you. I mean, in heaven, there's just a bunch of fun in heaven, a lot of stuff. Roller coasters and movies and eating, you don't fat, get fat. You don't need no golo and you don't need all that kind of stuff. My God, you're going to be your handsome self, your good looking, slim self. Man, you just, and when you get to heaven, you look better. You don't get older, you just keep getting better looking all the time. All of your dreams. The only sad thing about heaven is to get there and you miss someone. Don't leave your family. Get your family. And we're a family. All right, point your hands toward the, everybody that's standing. Father, I lift these wonderful people to you. I pray for them. Pray for the decisions that they're making that they will come to know you personally themselves. It won't be something you read in the Bible. They will know you. They'll know your voice. They'll hear you talking to them. So nobody will ever talk them out of the fact that you're real. They get to hear your own voice. Say to them, I'm your father and I love you and I got your back. And no matter what you go through, you're going to go through it with me. I'll never leave you alone to face anything. God, this is your, these are your children. And so, God, I'm just asking that you would reveal yourself to them. And I bind their feet to the path that you've called them to. And, Father, I'm asking you to remove things out of their lives that would try to separate them from you. The fact that you love them and you care for them. And I'm asking for that in your name, Jesus. Amen. Here's what I need you to do. I'm going to... I want to pray for these kids, and then I'm going to loose you to follow that lady out in the white. Let me hold your hand, man. I speak of blessings over your life. All the blessings of Abraham, yours. Blessings of Abraham, yours. Blessed all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. Blessed, blessed, and super blessed. I love you. The blessings of the Lord can make you rich and it'll add no sorrows. I love you. It'll make you success. And God, I thank you for the angels over these children. I give them permission to usher out any ungodly, nasty, funky, dirty spirits. In Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. All right. Follow that lady out right there. Okay, afterwards. Yes, darling. Okay. We'll do that. Anybody else? I'm closing with this. Anybody need prayer? For any reason, you come down. I'm going to ask my elders to come be up here with me. My, my school of ministry ministers come down here. Come on down. We're going to pray. I don't know what you may need. You may need some personal prayer. So, come on down, Cece. Why are you standing there looking like a little... Uh, I need you to get down. All my school, all, all y'all went through the school and ministry, supernatural, get, get down here. I need you to... Okay, I need y'all to stand in front of them. They're going to pray for you all. And I'm gonna, we're going to just pray for Keisha. She's getting ready to go on a mission trip. Father, we lift her up. We pray a hedge of protection over her life. We prophesy the 91st Psalm over her how you've given angels charge over to keep her in all her ways. We declare a thousand shall fall at her side and ten thousand at her right, but it shall not come to our dwelling. And only with her eyes shall she behold and see the rewards of the wicked. Father, we thank you for the grace and the anointing in her life to speak boldly and powerfully. 
We believe for signs and wonders and miracles. And we thank you, Father, that the office of an evangelist and all of its manifestations show up in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, Lord. Father, you go ahead and pray. You can pray. Father, we just... Father, we release the cure. We pray that the strength, new heart, new, new, new. Glory in Jesus' name. Go ahead, Fadisa. You all are dismissed. God bless you. See you next. What is the day we meet? Wednesday and Thursday, Sundays. I'm everywhere. I love you. God bless you. Thank you for your patience.